Hello everybody, my name is Python and welcome back to another episode here of Hardcore Skyblock. You join me here for a beautiful sunrise. There's lots of little mini odd jobs and bits and bobs that I want to get done. But before we do any of that, I just want to say of course a massive thank you for all of your lovely support and especially your patience as of late. I really do appreciate it my friends. Now for any of you guys who don't watch the Let's Play and haven't checked out my latest community post, basically the reason why there hasn't been any content lately is because from the 1st through the 5th of July, I had a little bit of a holiday. And then unfortunately, the very day I got back, I started to come down with a cold. The good news is I've just about recovered from that cold. But if you do notice that my voice is a little bit sort of sniffly, maybe a little bit blocked, then yeah, that's why. But yeah, I really appreciate all of the kind words and support. And again, your patience as of late. Thank you so much, folks. So let's address the elephant in the room, shall we, my friend? We have ourselves a whole bunch of what appears to be random stone brick slabs But do you guys want to hazard a guess as to what this is all about? Eh? I'll give you a little bit to ponder that as I remind you folks that if you are enjoying this series And you want to continue seeing more do be sure to continue dropping those likes beneath the videos It's the best way of helping out the channel and it really helps these videos get out there on YouTube Consider subscribing if you're new around here and you don't want to miss out on my future content and if you do want to go one further with your support, consider checking out pythongb.com slash PC if you're in the market for a brand new gaming PC. So then, my friends, if you guessed that these mark a biome boundary, you would be quite right. On this side, we have a tiger biome, and on this side... It's a river biome. Now, as far as I'm concerned, there is only really one reason why you would ever want a river biome in Minecraft. And that is because one of the things I'm going to be doing in the next few episodes is I am going to be making a drowned farm. Now, that is going to be a Minecraft first for me. I have never, ever tried to make a drowned farm in Minecraft. And the good news, my friends, is this. On a creative duplicate test world, I've already made made the design, so for once in my life, I actually know what I'm going to be doing. But believe me when I say there's going to be a lot of resources that go into it, chief among which is water. We need to see if we can't get ourselves an infinite water source today, my friends. Now, according to a lot of you folks, one of the things that you can do is you can bone meal into existence some long seagrass, and the seagrass, rather similar to kelp, will convert flowing water into water source blocks and that would essentially mean we have two water source blocks my friends and that will allow us to finally make ourselves an infinite water source. Checking out the cauldron though, looks like we've got one more stage of water filling to be had there. But honestly, I think I'm kind of tired of waiting for that to fill up at this point. I've had multiple different rain showers happen throughout the course of this series and just none of them have resulted in the total filling of that cauldron. So here's what we're gonna do, my friends. We're going to make ourselves a little bit of a mob spawning dark box and we're going to hope that we can grab ourselves some more bones from any skeletons that wind up spawning in the dark box. Only unfortunately, I don't have any bones whatsoever. I used a couple of bones or so to tame that wolf over there. And the remainder of the bone meal was used to try to basically get a whole bunch of trees to grow. And uh, to be honest, that was probably a bit of a waste. So let's do this thing, my friends. A nice, simple mob spawning dark box. We're just going to add ourselves a little bit of a roof on this thing. And I think all we'll do is we'll just use dirt to block off the entrance. And then periodically we'll just sort of walk over there perhaps. Hopefully get some dudes to spawn in here. Roll back over here. Just break the dirt and then slap some dudes around who may or may not be in here. Of course, we're going to make sure we're slabbing off the roof so, you know, we don't have a whole bunch of slime spawning. And uh, yeah, my friends, believe it or not, that is just about it. The little mob spawning dark box has been taken care of. So if I was to just sort of waltz my way over here and maybe wait a second or two, maybe we can get some dudes to spawn in. Maybe the best way of doing this is to check out the entity count. Once it goes above two... Maybe we'll have some dudes in that dark box. Oh, I can hear some cling clanging going on in here. Look at it do. We have a skeleton. Oh, 
We get bats spawn in as well, as it turns out. But that is not too much of a hassle because bats are part of a different mob cap. They do not contribute to the hostile mob cap. However, what they may do is restrict the spawning spaces in there. Uh huh. Yeah, that's kind of unfortunate, but never mind. It's just one of the many things you have to deal with when you are building a base right down at the very, very bottom of the world. Also, can you believe it? We didn't get a single bone from that skeleton. Now, this, my friends, is a concern. Probably my only concern regarding this uh, mob spawning dark box. Creepers. We don't really want creepers to be blowing up around here because if they wind up blowing up, for example, the wood beneath the dirt here... Uh, yeah, that could wind up being the end of the series. Hey! Bones for your boy. Haha, <laughs> okay. I mean, we actually only needed one, but we got two. Certainly can't complain about that. So here's what we need to do, folks. We need to grab out the water source, which I believe is underneath this block here. Then we simply chuck in the single water source. We then bone meal the bottom, so we get ourselves some uh, tall seagrass. We can then get rid of that tall seagrass. We can then pick this up and look at that. There is another water source at the bottom there. Fantastic! A massive thank you to all of you folks who suggested I do that in the comments area. So here we are. We can now go ahead. We could chuck that down there. We can then grab ourselves out the other one. And ladies and gentlemen, a momentous occasion for this series indeed. We have infinite water. Ha <laughs> ha! Good grief, it is the bat cave. Look at them all! There's so many! Oh my gosh! Check it out, my friends. We've got quite a lot of sheep on the go here, but we're probably going to need a whole bunch more even still. Only these folks is what's holding us back from making ourselves a hostile mob drop trap farm. Only inside the hostile mob drop trap farm, by placing down carpets, you can go ahead and restrict spiders and slimes spawning in. And I've done the maths. On a typical 8x8 spawning platform, you would only need to place down four carpets to be able to completely eradicate slimes and spiders from spawning. And if you're going to have the typical hostile mob drop trap farm where you've got four water sources sort of in a plus formation, you would wind up having four spawning platforms per layer, right? So that will be four times four carpets is 16 carpets per layer. Normally, I do two, three, maybe four spawn layers. So maximum, we're going to need 64 carpets. And I believe that means I need to get a minimum of 22 bits of wool. I believe it's three bits of carpet you get per time. So yeah, 22 times three, 66. 66 is more than a full stack. So yeah. That would be nice. Unfortunately for us, we are just about out of wheat. So I think we need to make ourselves a big old crop growing area. And hey, now that we have an infinite water source, everything is looking good, baby. <laughs> so here's what we're going to go and do. We are going to chuck a piece of dirt right there. We're going to put that on top. This line right here is going to represent the water source. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That would be the end. Then we have another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can then place in the water source rather like that. Then the first thing I think we're going to do is we are going to place down a whole bunch of sugar cane. With a whole bunch more dirt placed, what we're going to do is we are going to till all of this land and we are going to plant down a whole bunch of seeds. The more wheat we have, the quicker we can breed our sheep up, my friends. It's as simple as that. And there we are. A grand total of 48 seeds placed down and 16 bits of sugar cane. And and the final resource we're going to be needing in plentiful amounts is a whole bunch more wood. Only also in today's episode, I would like to begin on what I'm going to be calling Operation Ring. Essentially, we're going to expand our skyblock base to be a whopping 101 by 101 blocks big. It's going to be a circular base and the reason I've gone for 101 by 101 is because if we ever get to the stage where we manage to get a beacon, the range of a beacon is 50 blocks, right? So if we were stood exactly in the middle here, the beacon effect would reach 50 blocks away in all directions. So essentially it would be 50 plus 
50 for the radius, that'll be 100. And then, of course, you need to bear in mind the actual beacon block itself, which will make it, you know, 101. So, yeah, that is why 101 by 101. And I know, my friends, I know there's a lot of numbers being thrown at you in today's episode. And believe me, there's a lot more even still to come. Good grief, there's a lot of dudes in the dark box. <laughs> Hey, I wonder if we can get any rare mob drops today. Maybe a carrot or potato from the zombies, for example. That'd be pretty boss. Maybe a bow from a skeleton. That'll be... Oh, there is a potato! Oh, no way. Oh, I'm absolutely chuffed a bit. We have just obtained for ourselves... A new food source. Unfortunately for us, we are running a little bit low on dirt, but no worries. You just place down the coarse dirt and then you hoe it and it becomes a regular piece of dirt. And then you can keep on combining that dirt with gravel. So, for example, we've got two bits of dirt, combine it with gravel and boom, you've duplicated your dirt supply. Epic! It does mean that we're going to be going through quite a lot of shovels and hoes, though. Only to fill in the sort of outer areas of the circle entirely with dirt, and therefore grass, that's going to take a long time, believe me. Don't you dare set me on fire! Duh! Okay, no, he's done. <laughs> yeah, I didn't consider that. <laughs> Yeah, you can uh, get baby zombies, gotcha. They can roll through a one-by-one one gap. Also, we just got a bow. Epic! Oh, you son of a turd! I can't believe it. Unbelievable. Ruined, ruined. Slap him, slap him. There we go, he's done. Did we just get an instant health potion? Yes, we did. Excellent! Wow, two hearts of health back. You know what? I'll take it. Look at that, we just obtained ourselves a glass bottle, my friends. We got redstone as well. I completely forgot that witches drop redstone. Ah, oh, that is so big. So, 21 dirt. That's all we have, is it? Nope. We've actually got 41 now. <laughs> I wonder if there's a more efficient way of placing and tilling all of this coarse dirt. Maybe what we do is we place the coarse dirt in our offhand and... Yeah... This might be the way to go. I mean, at the end of the day, my friends, there's going to be a lot of repetition here. And I'm just trying to figure out the most effective ways of getting the resources we require. So as I was mentioning before, we're going 50 blocks out in all directions. Now, I've already done some basic calculations to get from this chest here to here is six blocks. Then from here all the way to the outer border is 24 blocks. So that's a total of 30. So that means we need to go a further 20 blocks out from here. Now, one thing I probably should mention is I absolutely do not expect to have Operation Ring done all in today's episode. I think that is just a disastrous recipe for burnout. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to opt for doing a quarter of Operation Ring in the next few episodes, including today. Only, yeah, believe me, there's a lot of resource grinding involved with this, my friends. Like, seriously, it's actually kind of crazy. So, one, two, three, four, five. So, 15 blocks out from here. So, let's get that done. And then it's going to be 20 blocks out from here as well. Up there is the jungle tree that we chopped up in the last episode. I'm not going to go ahead and rid the rest of it and all of the cobble there because I do believe there's other neighboring islands that we could probably build our way over to. So, 20 blocks out this way as well. And there we are. That is 20 blocks out. Now, we have the task of connecting the outlines together. Now, since we're making this into a circular shaped base, it gives me an opportunity once again to use a circle generator website. It's going to be a 101 by 101 block circle and according to the circle generator website the link of which will be in the description down below from the center point we need to go seven blocks out to the right and obviously seven blocks out to the left as well but since we're only focusing on the right we're just going to go from here so one two three four five six seven then it's going to be five blocks so three four five then it's going to be two loads of three one two three in one two three then it's going to be five loads of two so in one two in one two in one two in one two in one 
two. There we are. Then it's going to be two times one. So one in, one in. Then it's going to be another two. Then it's going to be seven times one. And this is where we fully turn a corner. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Right, now what we're going to do is we're going to waltz our way over there and we're going to do that sort of in reverse order. So we're going to the left this time. And basically what should happen is we should wind up perfectly connecting everything together. And that's it. It's all been perfectly connected. Yeah, buddy. Now, some of you folks may be wondering why I am using wood again for the slab material. And that is because I'm really trying my best to be as efficient with my materials as possible. And you may be wondering what exactly I mean by that. Check it out. When we put three bits of cobblestone into here, rather like so, we get six cobblestone slabs, right? Whereas, if we put one log in, we get four planks, and therefore we get six slabs. So effectively, only one block gives six slabs, and a little bit left over, of course. So as a result, I think it would be far better for us to use wood as our slab material, especially in terms of our sort of outer circle area, which is going to be completely covered with dirt and therefore grass. Now, I guess I could just leave the underside back here, just completely open, but, you know, creepers exist. And if they blow up and the dirt slash grass is removed, oh, are we not going to be having a good time, eh, folks? So I figured that actually having a little bit of an underbelly to this thing, a platform beneath the dirt, I think that is a good idea. I mean, of course, the creeper blasts can blow up the wood underneath the dirt slash grass, of course. But I guess the fact of the matter is this, the chances of us actually falling down to our deaths through both the dirt slash grass and the wood are lower than if we just had grass, right? That's my thinking anyway, folks. So there we are. One stack of logs has given us, what, like nearly eight stacks of oak slabs. That's not a bad rate of resources, if you ask me. So let's get to work, shall we, my friends? We're going to get our little safety layer done first here with the oak wood slabs. Needless to say, we're using slabs, so we're not having a massive invasion of slimes constantly. All right, very good. So that is one eighth of this outer circle filled in, and we've used roughly seven to eight stacks of slabs. So let's go with eight stacks. The basic maths is we're going to be needing, what, one stack of logs per eighth of this outer circle here. That's not too bad, actually. I think that's perfectly manageable. And now for a quick dark box break. Who have we got in here this time? Ah, oh, just a couple of zombies. Any of our crops grown yet? Yep, that one has grown. Now for a quick sheep breeding. Yeah, there's lots of things going on on this world now, isn't there, my friends? I'm actually feeling pretty chuffed about the progress that we're making. Right, now if I could just get myself maybe a couple more... Bits of wool, if at all possible, I might, just might, be able to make myself a bed finally, folks. That is another big goal achieved. If we can get that done, that is. Let's just grab this out. And there we are. We finally have a bed. Oh, I feel so happy. I feel so happy, folks. Let's go ahead and place it down. And bada bing, bada boom. We can now skip thunderstorms if we so wish. And now let's get the other eighth done. There we are. That is one full quarter of the outer circle filled in. And now, my friends, we have the gargantuan task of trying to duplicate into existence an absolute ridiculous ton of dirt. <laughs> now, the good news is, even when we do run out of gravel, we don't need to worry too much about it, because, of course, we could just pop up to the trail ruin way up there and just grab ourselves some more dirt and gravel from there. However, I think what I'd like to do before I pop up there and grab more stuff is I'd like to try and make myself that drowned farm that I was talking about before. See if I can't get myself a copper ingot, combine that copper ingot with a stick and a feather, make ourselves a brush, and then on our next trip up there, we might just be able to start 
brushing some of the sus gravel up there, my friends. Only you can get things like diamonds and emeralds from sus gravel and sus sand. How about it, my friends? Our first ever sleep on our skyblock world. 54 days in. <laughs> Oh, that is so bonkers, isn't it? So to finish off the episode, my friends, we're going to fill in as much of this outer quarter here with coarse dirt as possible. We certainly won't get it completely done in today's episode. We're just going to see how far we actually do get. Only, you know, we did kind of calculate before that it is roughly eight stacks of resources to get an eighth of the outer circle filled in. And I came into this with, I think, six stacks of coarse dirt. So, yeah, like I say, we're not gonna get it done, but we're gonna make a dent at the very least. I just realized we should probably be lighting this up as we go along, only these are all solid blocks and solid dark blocks will result in the spawning of regular hostile mobs as well as just slimes. Slimes I could deal with, everybody else is just kind of, yeah, I'd rather not. <laughs> oh, and actually, that's about it in terms of the coarse dirt supply. Oh, man, oh, man. There's a lot more to be placed down. But there we are. That's the progress we've made. And that, my friends, is going to wrap it up for today's episode. We've actually done a lot today. We've got our first bed. We've got ourselves a dark box. We've got ourselves infinite water. We've got lots of things going for us, my friends. And I'm feeling pretty good about that. So if you folks have enjoyed today's episode, bit of a wishy-washy, odd jobs, doing all sorts of stuff kind of episode, I would very much appreciate it if you'd head down beneath the video and spend a second to drop a like, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future content. But for now, thank you for watching. Look at that army of slimes behind me. I do not look forward to going ahead and having to take those folks down. I think I need a well-deserved rest, first of all, my friends. But yeah, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for all of your lovely support. And I'll see you folks in the next one. Bye-bye!